Okay, welcome to Collaborative Statistics. Uh, this is Chapter 7, the Central Limit Theorem. Uh, we just learned in Chapter 6 about the normal curve, and this takes the concept one step further. So the Central Limit Theorem is a lot in here. Um, as the as I said in Chapter 6, the normal distribution is the most important distribution. This is kind of the most important idea of the normal, of in statistics. Um, this says that if we collect lots and lots of samples, we can turn any distribution into a normal distribution. Okay, so we no longer have to know that something is normally distributed. Uh, this allows us that if we look at means when we take lots and lots and lots and lots of means we will get this normal distribution and so um, we're going to look at how it affects stuff from chapter 5 where we had the uniform and the exponential distributions which we knew weren't um, which you know aren't normal because they don't say the word normal in them and we know what they look like uh, the uniform is a, a box and the exponential is a down sloping curve so we're going to turn those two things into normal distributions so we can use the uh, z-scores to calculate areas under a curve um, we're going to then take this idea into chapters 8 and 9 where we look at hypothesis testing so um, this is a very, very crucial idea in statistics. And so what we have here is that if we take the average, and notice, oops, um, notice we no longer have x, but we have x bar. Okay, and so we're not looking at individual items, all right, and we're no longer just dividing by the standard deviation, we're dividing that standard deviation by the square root of n. Now, in when we're looking at one value, the average of one value is that value, and the square root of one is one. So we've really used this formula in chapter six. I don't remember which chapter we're in. Um, in the previous chapter on normal distributions, so um, we're used to it already. It's just that we didn't show it to you. Okay, um, so that's an important thing to realize is that we really haven't changed this formula at all. It's just that we're now looking at means versus just an individual value. And notice here the notation is that x bar follows the n distribution the end, the normal curve, where we have our mean and our standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Okay, and that's all this says. Okay, that there's no big difference. Okay, this says the standard deviation, the standard error of the mean, okay, is this value. All right, because we're not looking at individual values anymore. We have a whole bunch of things, and we're finding the these standard deviations so you know we are estimating but we've turned this into a normal curve and so that's the big big idea and so these deviations are actually going to be much smaller than the 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 sample one because we are dividing by these uh, square roots of n so our chances of getting outside of this 95 percent are much harder okay and so that's the next idea that's going to follow with um, hypothesis testing and uh, confidence intervals so that's why this is a very useful tool um, because we don't have like I said we don't have to know that it has any distribution um, it could be that we're, we're going to look at uniform and, and experimental, uh, exponential, but this could be anything. All right, we, that's, this is the big idea. All right, so we can also use this on sums. I don't really know how often this occurs, um, so uh, so it's not really the uh, an important thing to to memorize. Um, but it just allow telling us that we can add up these things. Not only can we just look at the means because remember the means are just a whole bunch of things added up and divided by how many things there were. So 
if we were given a mean, we can figure out the and and how many things there, how many how big n was. We could figure out the sums, and I guess that's the whole thing here. So this is saying that we can again use this sum, the z score, and we can take the sums of all the x's and subtract off the mean, the number of things times the mean, divided by the square root of n times the standard deviation. So no longer are we dividing, we're multiplying. So that's the difference between um, our mean and our standard deviation on the z-score. And here is our uh, notation for it. So we have our sum of x follows the n, the normal curve, parentheses, and then we have our you know, how many things there were times our mean, comma, the, standard, the square root of n times the standard deviation. So you put those values in. All right. And again, we have our standard error. This is, again, just our standard error of sums. You know, just like we had the standard error of the means, where we had the standard deviation divided by the square root of n, uh, this is the standard error of the sums, the formula that you're going to use. And that's all that's called. All right. So why does it work? So we have, as we get larger and larger numbers, um, the more samples that we have, okay, this is called the law of large numbers, the closer we follow the mean. So we could have one thing that fall, bounces way out and then it comes way down. And then as we go along, the more averages we take, notice it sometimes goes above and sometimes goes below, but it follows this mean value. All right, And that's why it works, is that the more and more of these we do, the more likely it is to fall, have an exact mean of the mean that we're looking for. Okay, of the population means. So those means will, if we keep taking the means and we take the means of the means, the the average of the means will actually be um, the mean of the population. So that's where this idea comes from. And the more of them we take, you know. So I mean, if we're talking hundreds of <laughs> of these things over and over and over again. All right. If I roll dice and I say, okay, well, I'm going to take and you know, roll two dice and find out what the values are. I'm going to add those up and I'm going to take the means of those and I'm going to get different means. But the expected value of two dice rolling is seven. So if I do, you know, ten rolls, but I do a thousand of those, the average of those thousand should come pretty close to being seven. It may be a little above, maybe a little below, but it'll be very close to seven. Much more so than if I just took the looking at one value, or if I, even if I took the aver the single average of those ten rolls, there I should get. You know, sometimes I'm going to get six, sometimes I'm going to get four, sometimes I'm going to get nine. You know, but as I go along, I'm going to get a set. I'm going to get closer and closer to seven when I take the average of those averages. And so that's what this CLT, the Central Limit Theorem, means. Okay, and so it allows us to use uniform exponential binomial distribution problems using the normal distribution okay because the normal distribution is just easier so that's why we want to be able to do it and that's the end of this chapter um, I will explain more of this in detail we'll go more over more problems in class I will see you on Saturday bye